Hi everyone, it's Jessica. Thanks for watching my video on my YouTube channel. Today what I'm going to be doing is creating a one-page scrapbook layout for some pictures of my daughter Charlotte. I've been really excited to scrapbook these pictures. I saw that they were coming up in my stack and I am just so excited because this was a really special day for us. Um, it was a snow day actually in January of 2018, so it was a couple of years ago. And I am a teacher so it was a day off for me as well and we sent the other two kids off to daycare and she and I kind of made um, a one-on-one -on -one day of it and I of course as always as a teacher had a giant stack of essays to grade and so one of the things that I like to do when I have a lot of grading to do is I go to a local coffee shop and I sit and I work and grade and drink my coffee and she had a little bit of homework but she also had this book that she had recently gotten for Christmas that year, um, which was how to draw, you know, different animals. And it was kind of like the step-by-step -step little drawing book that she's really into. She loves anything that's art and crafts. And um, she really is just kind of a little artist. And so she brought that along and she sat and she drew a picture and did some homework and I graded my papers. And it was just a really fun, sweet day that the two of us had together. And when she was done drawing her little picture, she actually titled it and she gave it to the baristas that were working there at the coffee shop. And to this day, that's been three years, it is still hanging on their cork board, which has all of their local flyers and announcements and things for the community on that board. And it's still there um, and it has never come down. I think if ever they do take it down, I'm not sure who will be more devastated that she will be or I will be, but um, we love to go in there and see if it's still hanging up and, and it always is. So like I said, when I saw that these pictures were coming up in my stack of things to scrapbook, I was really excited uh, to, to um, put them down and, and preserve this memory. So what I'm using here is actually two different paper packs. Um, one of them is a retired pack from Close to My Heart, and I believe it's called Celebrate Today. But the other one is something that is current from the 2020-2021 um, annual catalog, and that is Party Time. And the funny thing is, is the couple times that I have used my paper from the Party Time paper pack, which is meant to be a birthday-themed paper pack, I have never used it for anything related to birthdays. So here, obviously, this particular layout has nothing to do with a birthday. Um, I've used some of the paper, um, actually, on my Christmas cards that I recently made. And then I also used it on another layout that was a 5k race that I ran. So that's one of the things I love about Close to My Heart paper is that even though they might be themed paper, there is still just enough in there of the patterns that are kind of neutral or general that you can make work for anything that you have going on. It's just they have beautiful colors and are very vibrant. So I was able to kind of join those two paper packs together, both of them birthday themed uh, for something that has nothing to do with birthdays. Now here what I'm doing, I did decide that I wanted to take that pattern piece, which is going to be my base piece, and I wanted it to um, be on a piece of Lagoon cardstock. So I wanted just that little edge of Lagoon showing around the base of my page, um, but I didn't want to use an entire piece of cardstock because I am kind of, uh, I try to be thrifty with my cardstock where I can. So I just gutted out the middle of it since I didn't really need that part on there. And then that way I can still use some of that Lagoon cardstock for a different sort of project. And then I'm just going to go ahead and start putting my pieces down where I think I want them to go. Now I'm actually creating this layout from a sketch that I found on Pinterest. And usually I do turn to Pinterest when I'm doing a one-page layout because I find a lot of really good ideas on there. Um, if I'm doing a double-page scrapbooking layout, I generally turn to my pattern books from Close to My Heart. I have the entire collection, and they are lovely for inspirations. But for the one-pagers, I don't know. I just really like to use Pinterest for some reason. Um, I find myself kind of being a little bit more artistic with them. I think just because it is one page, and I, can, I feel like I can spend a little bit more time on them. So on that scrapbook layout that I'm using from Pinterest, uh, which I will put the information below because I want to make sure I give credit to where that came from and I don't remember right off the top of my head. But on the page map layout, it does show this circle kind of coming around the top of the page and then behind where the pictures and the papers are down there at the bottom. And I think it's actually meant to be maybe like some buttons or brads or something of that nature 
in a circle shape around the top, but I decided that I wanted to do it as some stitching. So I just grabbed a plate from downstairs in the kitchen and I used it to trace that circle and I didn't even do the entire circle, I just kind of did around that top part. And then I used my piercing tool from close to my heart to poke the holes and then some DMC thread in a color that I liked and I just stitched around that circle, um, just as a little extra detail. I really love to stitch on my layouts and my cards, and I just use you know regular embroidery floss for it, because then you can have pretty much any color that you need to match your paper. So like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and start adhering my different pieces of pattern paper here, and I am such a pattern girl. I, I love to follow directions and you know look at something and have it tell me, put this here, do this here, cut it to this. And when I do look at um, patterns that are on Pinterest, one of the things that does frustrate me is usually they don't have you know paper dimensions or where things exactly are supposed to go. And you're just kind of eyeballing it, um, which is a little bit of a struggle for me because like I said, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm very much a pattern girl. Um, I like to look at something and start by copying it before I go off in my own direction. Um, and so this was a little bit tough for me. You're going to see me kind of struggle a little bit. I did cut some of it out of the video. I struggled a little bit with where to put everything and how to kind of arrange all of these pieces here, the two different pictures, and then my white piece of cardstock that's gonna have my journaling on it. Um, I, I struggled a little bit with where to kind of put those because I'm just looking at a sketch and, and there aren't any really directions other than just the image of that. Um, so I play around with that quite a bit. Um, but you know, it ended, it ended up working out. I just kind of had to fuss with it a little bit. Now my paper, my, I'm sorry, my pictures are matted on some, a Lagoon cardstock and I've been using my Lagoon ink pad just to ink around the edges of it as that little something extra. And I did the same thing with the other pattern pieces of paper, some of them with my raspberry ink and I just kind of ink edge distressed all of those papers. Now this particular die cut is from the recent Seasons in Motion special that Close to My Heart had. And it's actually meant to be used with those animated stamps. Um, but I thought it was the perfect piece to cut as my journaling piece. Um, and then, like I said, you can see here, I'm going to kind of play around a little bit. I'm not sure exactly what I want it to look like. I kind of pulled out some of my pieces so that I could get a better idea of what the finished piece might look like. And on the, um, on the, the map that I'm using from Pinterest, it does actually show it as a winter page with a bunch of snowflakes, which I thought was perfect because like I said, this was a snow day and that was why she and I were together at the coffee shop. And so I kept those snowflake pieces. I thought that was really cute. And I cut them out of ballerina paper, cardstock paper, um, rather than the traditional white because I really liked how colorful everything was in this layout. Um, now here I'm just taking my sponge and using some of that Lagoon ink, again, to edge distress around everything. Um, and so like I said, I did that for all the papers, either in Lagoon ink or in the Raspberry ink, which are the colors that are in these papers. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is take my T-ruler and my Versamat and use the lines in my Versamat so that I can take a journaling pen and draw some journaling lines on that tag piece. And then I'm gonna be ready to go ahead and put that onto my layout, somewhere in the middle there of those two pictures. Like I said, I kind of had to fuss a little bit with where I was going to put them. I did end up taking that picture that's down on the right side and popping it up on some foam tape just a little bit, um, just to kind of make it stand out a little bit more. She was so cute in there. You could see I had my cup of coffee and she had a little thing of donuts and her little homework workbook. Um, and she was just so proud of herself that she was sitting in a coffee shop doing work just like mama does. So, all right, so now we've got everything down there and it's time to start the embellishment process, which for me sometimes is the hardest part because I'm like, now what, now what do I do? So like I said, I just kind of took some of those pieces and I started kind of playing around with where I want the snowflakes to go. And I'm, this is that little strip here. I'm going to put my title letters across the top of it. They're gonna sit on that little strip and I'm thinking I'm going to title this local artist just because she is kind of, like we said, in our family, she's kind of famous for this picture that she's got in the coffee shop. And then I'm going to play around with these snowflakes. Now, originally, I cut out those circles out of that ballerina cardstock as well because just the other day when I was 
I was also cutting snowflakes actually out of my Cricut, I noticed that my Cricut mat was not very sticky anymore and so it wasn't holding the paper down very well. And my Cricut blade also I think is very dull and it's time to be changed. So those two thing com things combined do not make for very good cuts on the Cricut, especially when you're doing something intricate like the snowflake. And I was a little worried that as I was trying to cut out these ballerina snowflakes that maybe they wouldn't cut so well. So I had the idea of cutting the circles, which I thought would be an easier shape to cut, and then stamping some snowflakes on them in the raspberry ink and then kind of interspersing those with the actual snowflake cuts. But I, in the end, you'll see I don't use them. They just, they didn't look right. And so I ended up stamping the actual snowflakes directly on the paper itself instead. All right, now for my title, I am going to cut out the letters for the word artist. And I am using um, a stamp set that is currently available and close to my heart. It's called the Simple Serif, um, and I love it. It comes in both uppercase and lowercase, and it has numbers and some punctuation marks and things. And I love it because if you get the entire set and bundle, not only do you have the stamps, but you have the coordinating thin cuts. And so you can really kind of create with it a big combination of these. You know, you could stamp on top of the thin cut, you could use the stamp alone, you can use the thin cut alone. So there's so many different options and ways to use it and it's really just such a good staple to have in your crafting stash. And then because there's a lot going on on this layout um, and I just kind of felt like maybe that word artist wasn't visible enough, I did end up cutting all of those uh, letters for the word artist out four times. And then off camera, I just glued them together. So it really kind of made almost like a thick chipboard, only it's made out of cardstock instead. And that's a trick that I have seen other uh, close to my heart makers use, and I've never done before this particular layout, but I really liked the way that it worked. It took me a few extra minutes to cut them four times, um, but it really, it didn't take that long and it, it really made such a difference. I don't know if you can see it in the video or not, but it makes those letters really stand out a whole lot more than when they were just on there in that single cardstock layer. So they are stacked together four times on there. And then I just used my HodgePodge Alphabet Stamp, which is a retired stamp set, to stamp local above it. And then at this point, I'm like I said, I'm gonna kind of fuss with those <laughs> circle snowflakes a little bit, but no, I don't really like them. I'm kind of thinking about it like, no. But I'm going to go ahead and put down my other big snowflake down there at the bottom. And because that one bottom right picture is up on some foam tape, part of that big snowflake does need a little bit of foam tape stuck behind it too as well. But um, I, So I did that and I put down down at the bottom. And then like I said, because I didn't like those circles, I'm just going to take... And I just used some snowflake stamps from two different stamp sets. One is from the Seasons in Motion stamp set, actually the animated stamps. And then the other one is from a really, really old stamp set. And I just kind of grabbed a couple of different snowflake images and randomly stamped them around my paper. Um, once I started doing it, I wasn't sure I actually really liked it. Um, it kind of grew on me after I was done, but um, I probably would have put more snowflakes stamped onto the paper, except like I said, as soon as I started doing it, I thought, oh, I don't know how I feel about this in raspberry. Maybe that's a little too dark, but I'd already started. And so I had to see it through, but I didn't want to keep stamping and keep stamping. And then, you know, I hate that when you do that. Um, you get to the point where you've just added too much and kind of ruined your layout. So I just, I didn't put that many down, but I stopped. And then the very final thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Stickles uh, Glitter Glue, which is, I believe, the icicle um, color, and I just put a little dab of it in the center of those bigger snowflakes, and then on that really big snowflake down at the bottom of the page, I put some in the little, the little parts at the top of each of the points of the snowflake. And that is it. I'm going to add my journaling later. Thank you for watching. I will put some links below. If you um, liked what you saw, please consider shopping with me. And happy crafting, everyone. Have a lovely day.